The fourth question is about identifying classical curves. Here we have a polar graph. Now, if you know the basics of polar graph, you might tell the answer is related with sine theta. And since the radius is how much? 3, the answer is 3 sine theta. That's the final answer. But how would you know that? See, along the x and y, if at all, now these are polar grids, right? Like circles are there. If you see a circle anywhere on the y-axis, if it's above and if it's below, it's either minus sine theta or plus sine theta. It can't be cosine. It can only be sine if it's over here. And depending on the radius, sorry, the diameter, this is how much diameter? 1, 2, 3. 3 means it will be 3 sine theta. So if it is along the x-axis, then that is called cosine. That is one important thing you must remember. Now, it doesn't matter you can't remember 3 or exactly what it is. I will tell you the calculator method now. Look into your four options. Now, here we have the answer. R is equal to 3 sine theta, right? But you will have four options. You will have 2 sine and 2 cosine. Looking at this, since it's above, you must eliminate all the cosine options. Only sine can be the options. Let's go to mode and say, if we are, sorry, table 7. And let's type it out. 3 sine theta let me take it as alpha x now here i'm not gonna do it in terms of radians because my default mode is in degrees i'll leave it as degrees only this is now starting right i will start at zero degrees and end at 360 degrees just memorize these for all these polar graphs you can remember this zero 360 what is the step you want to give i will give a step of 30 or 60, uh, 30 is the most ideal, okay? Or you can give, say, 45 degrees and all, but 30 is the most ideal. 30. So at zero, it's zero only. This is the point. And then three, 30 degrees, where is it going? If you see this 30 degree line, that's the 30 degree, right? And what is the value? 30 is 1.5. This is 60 is 2.5 and 30 is 1.5. So one, one and a half, yes, that is the point, right? What about 60 degrees? This is the line. It's 1, 2, 2 point, 2 and a half. It's 2.59. Yes, that's accurate. What about the other values? Same way, you can compare because already the graph will be given. Just compare the values now. Here we have at 90, it's 3. Is it true? Yes, it's 3. 1, 2, 3. And what about 120 degrees? It is 2.59, is it? 1, 2, yes, 2.59. Then we have 1.5. So this is 1.5 not this and this is again 0 and then it keeps on going but it will be negative sign let, let, let's see that over here you can see it's minus 1.5 at 210 degrees so this is 180 210 is this minus 1.5 means go backwards 1 1.5 so over here at 240 degrees it's minus 2.59 so 1 2 2. this is the value but it's over here, but minus, that's why we go back. 270, same thing. We can, 270 is over here, 3 pi by 2, right? Minus 3. So not over here, it's minus 1, 2, 3. This is the point. So this is how we get a circle. If you get one circle, that's enough. You can easily uh, differentiate the graph. So that's how we do these problems. Now here we have a lemnus gate. If you look, look at such graph, it's lemnus gate. Now, graphing them can be a bit tricky, but anyways, now, you know, this is a lemnus gate. There will be four options. These options are generally in terms of a squared sine 2 theta. Now, looking at the standard form, you can easily tell, but imagine you can't remember the standard form. You need the calculator method, then it's fine. We have to take our calculator. Now, here for lemnus gate, remember, it's not like circle. So, I generally focus only on the first part. So, from 0 to 90 degrees, just focus over there. Why? Because if you take, say, 360 degree, you won't get the proper values because over here, these are same values. You can try 0, 360, 30 degrees. It may not give you the exact uh, answer. It will give you, but not more accurate one. So what you do is, more 7, write this form. Now, over here, when you write the form, there's a very important thing. You can't write directly this 9 sine 2 theta. No, you should write square root because we have to take square root on both these sides to get r. This is 9 sine 2 theta is basically alpha x, close the bracket, and there's no g of x. Where do you want to start? It's at 0. Now, I'll, since I'll just focus on this particular values, 
I will take at least half of them from 0 to pi. Okay. So what I'll do is end at 180. And here step is very important. I'll give 15. And now you can see at 0, where is it? 0 is 0 only. What about 15 degrees? 15 is over here at this point. It's around 1.2.1. Yes, this is correct. Then 2.79. Yes, it's correct. What about this 45? It's 3. Yes. And so on. You can just compare. Only now over here, some of them will be error. Just ignore the points. Why? Because we have square root, right? If at all the inside the value it's negative, it will be an error. That's fine. But you will get enough values to easily deduce which is the correct one. Okay. You can try with 360, but generally you won't get the answers. Let me just show you. Because the computation over here, if you take till 360 and 15, there is insufficient memory. So you can try one thing. 0 to 360 and say 30 degrees. Now over here, see these values, many are missed out. See, these are missed out. Over here, they are all recurring points. At 30, at 60, 30, it's yes, 2.79, correct. Even over here, it's 2.8, yes, correct. So we are not getting much information, you know. So that's why I generally take 0 to pi and take 15 degrees. You'll get a lot of information of the graph. Basically, you're just looking into the, you know, graphing the equation and checking. If you graph the wrong equation, if you take the wrong equation and check for the values, the values will be wrong. It won't match. Only one equation will match to this graph. So it's easy to deduce. Even over here, just see the final four options because you will have four options. Put this in the graph. This is very simple. Just put this in the graph and see which is belonging to A. Does the points match with the graph? And that's it. Same thing with the other graphs. Please make sure you graph them in the calculator. You get the values and then compare. This, row, this is a rose curve. And this is another circle. It's simple over here. It's cosine and left side is minus. And since the radius is 2, minus 2 cos theta. Now this is lemnus scale again. Over here. Remember, for lemnus scale, you have to always take the square root. That is the end of this question. I hope it is clear. If you have any doubts, please consider re-watching the video or posting your doubts in the comments. I hope you all will head on to the next video.